What's going on everybody? My name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This is a playlist on a new series of videos on scientific computation using Python. Now, I already have a series on Python before that was made from Python 2. Now, this one is actually a new series made using Python 3. Now, Python 2 is going to be uh, uh, out of service for instance from uh, what January 2021, 2020 and uh, so a lot of people are actively migrating to Python 3. So I thought it, this would be a best time to you know start with Python 3 and uh, get a new series on, on with it. So here we go. Like today in this first video, I'm just going to talk about little basics about how to get some inputs from the user and then run about with it. And then in the ups, up, upcoming videos, we'll talk about operations or arithmetic operators, the constructs that are available in Python and so on and so forth. All right. So let's get started. So I'm going to use PyCharm for my videos. You can, you are free to use whatever editor you like. And I'm going to use Anaconda Python as my Python, uh, Python, Python pro interpreter. You are free to use uh, any other in version of Python that is available. And I just prefer that you'll have Python 3 to go over with. That's all, that's the basic prerequisite. Other than that, uh, once this, all of this is set, let's actually get started. First, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to my presentation mode so that uh, the entire code is clean. First, let's actually try tell what kind of program we're going to do. We are going to write a program program to get a user input and print it out. Print it out. All right. So first things first. If you want to write some description about what your program is or what your function is and all of that, it's better to write it in three double quotes. I mean, three uh, single quotes or three double quotes, like double quotes that are available. These are called as doc strings, also called as document strings. Essentially, in any Python library, if you notice any doc documentation help that is available in it, they are all written in, within, within three double quotes or three single quotes like this. All right. So if you call in the help function of those libraries, these information will come out first and help tell the user what it actually means. So it's actually a good practice to write what you're, what you're going to do in that program and whatever. All right. Now, first things first, what, what I'm going to do is let me create a variable. Let me say temperature. And this temp this variable temperature is going to store the temperature of a particular city. So I'm going to uh, let, let I'm going I can say something like 25 degrees Celsius, right? I can say 25. If I want to check this out, I can use the print statement and say print temp, print temp. All right. And what I do is in PyCharm we have the option to run it directly like this. Uh, there's an option to run this file in using terminal, but uh, we'll go to that later. Right now, let's just run it with the, the already existing and interpret um, features that are available in the editor itself. All right. Uh, so if I run that, there we go. It shows it shows me that the temperature is 325. Neat. So far so good. But here's the thing. This is not fancy, so to speak. In the sense, if you're going to actually run a program and all of that, you're not going to hardcore the number like this. You're going, you preferably would like the user to input the numbers to run, right? If they if you want to write a small program and all of that, right? So in that case, what you could do, you write, you will call this function called as input. And then you, pro you give some prompt so that the user knows what to enter. So if we just say, enter the temperature in the city all right now once you do that now you run this yeah now the same program the only thing is that it enters this statement and it's waiting for us to give some answers now what i'll do let me just give the same value 25 and it prints out 25 notice something here just press 25 without a dot and it came out without a dot right so that makes me wonder what uh, what does this mean so if i were to enter something like if i were to run the same program again and i know and if i enter something like uh, a new city this is where i'm staying a city called bangalore if i enter it just directly prints bangalore but we want to we want to store the temperature but it's taking a string right we don't want this to happen 
right? So Python, when it's designed, it's kind of designed in a manner that it can uh, take um, take any kind of values and work about with it. So this, as a consequence, the input statement over here, this is actually this is actually takes takes a whatever value you give as strings by default in Python three. So in Python two, there was this feature to convert this and uh, take the value into uh, you know find the data type as per as per the entry, but that might I think that got a lot of trouble, so they removed that and instead use this wherein you input will automatically take whatever value of strings and you need something on the outside to take care of it. So since the temperature can be in floating point value, that means it can be something like a, a number with a, a number with a decimal point like twenty three point four, nineteen point six, or something like that. We'll wrap this input statement around a float state around a float function like this, right? And then, so the, and then, if we run this co same program, right? And if I give the same value, let's say, it'll get an error. It says value error could not convert string to float. Cool. So this way, whatever value you're inputting, if uh, if the value is a uh, number, it'll convert the number as it'll use as a number as it is. But if it's a string like this, city name and all of that, this is this is going to throw a problem. Cool. Right, that way we are kind of checking this out. Now, let me run this again. This time let me give the actual temperature. Uh, let's say today it, it was 27 degrees something. 27.2, let's say why not. Yeah, it prints 27.2, perfect. Now what we'll do is we'll do a little more value. We'll do a little more stuff. We'll just copy this. And we'll say, we'll store the city too. You just say city so this one has to be a flow uh, need not be a float this has to be a string so what you can do is just remove this float function on the outside let's say enter the uh, enter the name of the city all right this one works fine now if I, now what I have to do is just to make sure that the city value is printed properly I'm using the print statement I'm printing the city value as well so if I run this, it's going to ask me about the city uh, temperature in the city, 27.8, and name of the city. This time, let uh, let's assume that I'm in uh, Russia. Uh, uh, let's say somewhere in uh, not Russia, uh, Russia. So let let's just say I'm in Moscow for now. And there we go. It says 27.8 and Moscow. Cool. It's working fine. Uh, by the way, will it reach 27.8 degrees Celsius in Moscow? I don't know. You guys let me know. right? I, I think it's too hard for a summer day, or even on 27.8. Let me know. Anyway, uh, that said, now let's move on to one more info. right? Let's print the rainfall in that city as well. So rainfall can be millimeters and it can be float too. But the, for the sake of simplicity, I'm, for the sake of you know, accuracy, I'm going to copy this same statement again and keep it as it is float and i'm going to say float input enter the uh, rainfall in mm in the city right and just to be sure i'll just print it rain over here and let's me let me try this out okay it just mentions that same temperature i'm going to give like 20 uh, this time I'm, let me give like 43 the uh, yeah 43 degrees celsius maybe somewhere in uh, somewhere in uh, sahara okay i'm just going to say uh, you know give which city has 43 degrees maybe sydney 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 minus peak summer might have 43 degrees celsius you guys let me know if this is correct anyway and rainfall at that day just 5 mm so there you go it shows 43.0 sydney and 5.0 right i noticed this this point zero thing at the end of it is because since we put the float statement over here, it automatically convert this from integer to a float. Now, what does these values mean, integer and float and all of that? You'll get to know shortly. But for now, time being, just remember that if it's a float, uh, if a number is called a float, if it has any decimal part to it, right? A number is called as an integer if there is there's no decimal part to it. That's all there is to know right now. Now here's the thing. Before we wind wind this program, let's actually write this this statement in a little more convenient manner. See, if someone were to look at these data, look at these results, they would have a they would have no clue as to what this means, right? So it would be better if you write some uh, statements, uh, print uh, extra little information over here, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, 
I'm going to say in, uh, I'm going to put some sentences around it. I'll say in the city in the city so here is the city value is going to print as it is the temperature is temperature is and I'm going to put the temperature value temp uh, degrees and degree C and the uh, rainfall rainfall in mm is this now what I did here I it's just very similar to what I did earlier only thing is I'm just passing a few other strings over here so that it will form a clean sentence so if it, it will say something like in the city Sydney the temperature is 43 degrees degree C and the rainfall in MM is 5 so it's going to print like that so if I were to run the same program again uh, what did I forget ah, I forgot a comma I forgot a comma over here ah, yeah cool and if I run this again it will give me a value so I'm going let's say 43 same value Sydney and then I'm going to enter the value like say 5 mm okay 5 mm for now so it says in this in in the Sydney uh, the temperature is 43.0 degree C and the rainfall is mm okay we will say in the city yeah this will be a lot more grammatically correct but anyway there you go this is how your this is your first program and this in this program we did a few things one we actually stored values and variables and try to print them out we also got the in values as input from the user we used a float statement to convert the data types of it when we need it and we used the print statement to print not only the values but to make them print in the form of a sentence to make sense to the user right so that's all i have for you all in this video thank you for watching and in the next video we'll do something little more fancier all right until then take care